My name is Mickey Beckett. My name is Matilda Nichols. I'm an Ilka 7 sailor. I'm part of the British sailing team. I'm an Ilka 6 sailor on the British sailing team. And we're here to discuss the new Harkin kicker system. For the bulk of my career, I've used the predecessor to this system, which was the old Harkin kicker base unit, which has been around for kind of 20 years now. And that's what the majority of the fleet have used. And it's pretty cool to see, you know, this new system come in. And I've experimented with other brands that have brought out other products in the last few years. But this, I imagine, is what the bulk of the fleet will be using in the coming years. Definitely got a lot less friction than the traditional original Harkin kicker system. Um, works very nicely when I'm adjusting upwind um, and it's extremely responsive when I release the kicker to go around the windward mark to head downwind, which is really key. So the main thing that's striking about this is obviously a complete redesign of all three blocks, not just the base unit, but the middle twiddle block and the, the top high-low block as well. Um, and with all three of those designed to complement one another so that you can have all four of the secondary line lines sort of running parallel, uh, not interfering with one another. That makes for a really nice system. So I'm on a 12 to 1 uh, Ilka kicker setup. I definitely say the kicker is more powerful and more responsive uh, when I release it. Um, definitely feels smoother to pull it all on. What we really wanted to focus on on the new unit was um, reducing the friction. So we concentrated on the most high, highly loaded shiv on the product, and this includes the upper block, which is the main shiv leading out from the lower unit here on the arm. And in the course of designing this product, we came up with a new 25 millimeter fly shiv that we put in the lower unit and the upper unit to replace the shiv that the smaller shiv that was in the, the old unit. The old shiv is aluminum and running on a composite bushing. The new shiv is all stainless, ball bearings, inner race, outer race, full complement, dual row of balls in there to reduce the friction and take the load. These two shivs are our current 18 millimeter fly shivs. So it's a plastic outer race with stainless balls, dual race, and uh, stainless inner race on those two. So they're slightly bigger than the 16 millimeter shivs on the old unit. We know from years and years of testing that larger shivs are more efficient. I know there's going to be a lot of questions about the fact that we used our, our glass-filled polymer in this, in this design, which some people call plastic and we don't. It's just an engineering resin with a high glass fiber content that makes it extremely strong. And people will question it against the stainless steel that we used to have and the metal that our competitors use. But this is an opportunity for us to make a really lightweight cutting edge product because it's injection molded that is strong enough to withstand the toughest competition. The floating block, the, the double center block, does a couple of jobs. Um, one, it's the dead end for the, the lower portion uh, of the purchase. And it's also the dead end for the cascade on the the higher load portion of the systems. It's also the one block that's moving the most. And since that block moves the most, keeping the alignment of, of all this spaghetti is important. As the vang um, gets tensioned or, or released, that center block is the one moving. And if you look closely, you'll see that the line is moving at different speeds. And because of that, you see the block slightly tipping. The one side of the shiv is getting tipped and loaded more than the other. So for that reason, we chose to go away from the conventional double block where those loads aren't balanced and the shivs can tip. And we chose to pursue a fiddle, fiddle option. Our next idea, though, was how can we spread the line apart? How can we take these four or five strands align and give them space so that there's no chance of them rubbing or running across each other. With a conventional fiddle, your small shiv really controls the size of the big shiv. You need enough space for four lines to run directly past each other and not be rubbing. And 
switching to a 90 degree fiddle, um, the twist in the fiddle allows us to, to put much more space between the reeve. So then we said, well, what are our best available bearing systems today? And for the larger shiv, that was our, our 29 zircon block. And for the small shiv, that was our 18 mil fly block. About the same time we were looking at this first fiddle option, I 3D printed a kind of a combination of those two. Um, literally taking the two models, cutting them, and plugging them together. But there still wasn't that, that extra reeving space, um, that, that clearance between the lines. Initially, we tried um, doing a full 90 degree twist, but the feasibility of injection molding that part, making the part strong enough and structural and, and assemblable, just wasn't going to work. So we said, well, how much do we really need to twist that fiddle to give us enough space in the line? And we said, well, let's, let's try 45 degrees and see if it worked. It's something we've never done before. It's an idea I don't believe any of our competitors have, have done before either. The boom key block is uh, a new addition to our fly family, our, our mighty and tiny blocks. This one does the grunt of the load for the system. Where the twisted fiddle was sharing just a third of the load of the system, the upper boom block is taking three times the load of that twisted fiddle. So the strongest bearings, most efficient bearings we can, can put into the smallest package. We have a unique van key compared to the the historic stamped or cold headed round key. We've got a high strength stainless casting. So the, the casting design gave us flexibility to put strength where we need strength and remove weight where we could remove. So the, the sides have weight saving um, contours. Historically this used to be the weak link in the, the Ilka Vang system. Um, we feel that we've got a bomb-proof um, component now. It's a well-designed bit of kit. You know, it, it's it, the boat. This boat is obviously over 50 years old, and the evolutions in kit that you use are are small, but nevertheless, they're very, very important in what is the most competitive class you could possibly race. You need every little bit of help you can get.